Hi. It's Miss Kinsella. Oh, thank you for seeing some faces. Thank you. Thanks for turning your screens on. It makes it much easier for me. We're just gonna give it a minute to get as many people into the meeting. People are still joining. People are rolling in. We're at like 115 right now. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna get started. Um, thank you so much um, for joining us tonight. Um, I wish it could have been in person. Um, hopefully this is the end of virtual um, meetings for all of us. Hello, my friends. Um, my name is Michelle Kinsella and I teach all of your children. Um, this has been um, an interesting year. I'm glad that for those of your kids, now I'm seeing some of their faces now, um, which is um, so wonderful um, to see because it's it's been an interesting year. Um, I have been a teacher here in framing here for the last 25 years, which is totally insane because I don't feel old enough to be a teacher for 25 years, um, but it's true. Um, I have taught um, close to 20,000 children in Framingham since I first started teaching. Um, so, which is quite a gift um, for me. Um, my goal for tonight is for you to leave this meeting feeling comfortable and ready to talk to, to, talk to your children about puberty stuff, um, which is my favorite thing to teach about. Um, and my goal for your children every year or this year and all the years teaching is to help kids make good choices and learn how to make healthy decisions for themselves and for their bodies. So I, I'm looking up because I have two screens. So I'm sorry, I'm not looking directly at you this way, um, but I can see all of your faces up above. So that's why I am looking up. So I go to every class um, once a week for 30 minutes. And you can see my schedule um, on, on here. All of my classes for the entire year, puberty included, okay, everybody's together, okay? Everybody's together. I tell everyone everything because there are no secrets with the body. The body is a wonderful, beautiful thing. And it's important that we talk about this information openly so that children can learn to be respectful as we're learning about this really important topic. Okay. So we were all prepubescent. So this is me, 1984, looking all fabulous, you know, still like that maroon color. I feel like it works for me. Um, it's crazy to think, okay, I remember this. I remember picture day. I remember that awesome shirt, right? It seems like yesterday. And the thought that you, myself included, have children old enough to be learning about puberty, it's kind of crazy, right? So we have a little poll question. And if Rochelle, you can launch the little poll question for everybody. So are you feeling nervous? Oh, look at this, excellent. I love these polls, I think they're fun. So little yes, little no, not until this moment, that's okay, because by the end of the meeting today, hopefully you're going to feel um, more comfortable um, with all of this information. So, excellent. Um, let me close that. Oops. Can you close that for me, Rochelle? Excellent. 
Okay, oops, why is my thing churning? Okay, so in my mind, this is how old my children are. When I think about my kids, Jack and Ben, and I close my eyes and I think about them, this is what I feel they are, okay? Except they are 10th grade and uh, a freshman in college, okay? And so that saying, the days are long and the years are short, I have never felt it more in my life um, recently. Okay, especially as my son is in college this year, I cried for two weeks straight when he went to college. I'm like, did I teach him enough? Is he ready um, for all this? So hold on to these kids of yours because in a blink of an eye, they're gonna be graduating from high school. And even just saying that, it makes me teary-eyed because my son's a sophomore and knowing I only have two more years with them, um, it's crazy. So hold on to them. Okay. This puberty stuff is going to be hard at times. Okay. It's hard for them. It's going to be hard for you at times. Okay. But just appreciate that you don't have that much time left with them. Okay. Um, so we really want to appreciate that. So my plan for today um, is to go over the changes that happen um, during puberty. We're going to talk about anatomy, okay? And then I also will go over some resources with all of you. There will be times um, for questions and answers, um, but I have that set up. Um, in the slide. So I'll talk for a bit and then I'll stop and ask um, for questions. I don't see the chat feature. So if you are writing in the chat, um, Rochelle will help me um, with, with the chat features. Okay. All right, let's start. So um, in talking about puberty, puberty is a time of growth and change that happens to, to, to everybody, right? All of us went through puberty. Um, the kids are always like, oh, when am I going to get puberty? Like they want like the exact day and time. It's like, do I have puberty yet? I'm like, it's a process, okay? And I'm going to be going over all of the different changes that are going to be happening with them. Um, one of the first things that you can look for to know if your child is starting to go through puberty is their feet. So once their feet start growing, Okay, um, usually, you know, more than a size in less than like six to nine months is the start of puberty. Okay, and so the kids are all excited. They're like, you know, oh, in September I was a size four and now I'm size five and a half. I got puberty, you know, and they're just like so excited. Like, I got puberty. Do you have puberty? They're like, no, I don't have puberty. Um, and so my goal this entire school year is to make this like a happy event for them. They're excited. They're nervous. Okay. Just like I'm sure some of you um, may be nervous thinking about this information that your child is old enough to hear about it. Um, but that has been my all since the beginning of the school year, we have been building okay, to this moment. My hope is that your kids have talked about health class that they've come home and said, oh, Miss Kinsella said, um, and, and shared with you things that are going on in class um, because that allows for communication. My whole um, point of being silly and being goofy with your children is so that they come home and talk to you. And this opens the lines of communication for them. So um, with growth spurts, one thing that the kids really do enjoy, and if you don't do this, I would suggest you do, is like in some sort of doorway, if you start measuring them, and then every like three months or so, um, just sort of measure them. And it makes them feel like, okay, yes, I'm growing. They're, you know, they feel excited about all of that. 
Um, we spend a lot of time uh, talking about the changes that are going to happen to their armpits. And so we have one whole week that is devoted to the armpit. Okay, why armpits get sweaty, why armpits get stinky, you know, why armpits get hairy, um, and 30 minutes devoted to an armpit. You never knew it would be so exciting. Um, so we, in talking about armpits, which it seems so silly um, for us as adults, is that kids don't even know how to put deodorant on, okay? And so um, obviously, you know, we talk about, you know, hygiene and taking a shower and washing our bodies and not just standing in the shower for like 10 minutes with the water just on our bodies doing nothing. Like they got a job. Their job is to clean their body, clean all of their parts, um, making sure that they do start to put on deodorant. I've had kids, um, I had one over here. I had one, sorry, I thought I had one open. Um, that kids didn't know, you know how sometimes, uh, not this one, but they have the plastic uh, container, like that little plastic piece on the deodorant. I've had kids that'll say to me, oh, Miss Kinsella, I'm using the deodorant, but it really, it, it hurts me. It scratches me. And I'm like, why does it scratch you? They didn't know to roll the deodorant up and to take the plastic piece off. So when I say that we need to teach our kids how to use deodorant, I'm not kidding. We really have to teach them how to do these things. And it seems so second nature to all of us, but it really isn't um, to our kids. Um, we spend a whole week only learning about pimples, okay? Why pimples grow, um, how to prevent them. Usually even like today, got like nice pimples myself. Um, we, we talk about them. Um, kids get nervous, okay, um, about them, especially if kids have already started to get pimples. Um, they get a little like, oh, oh no, don't let anyone look at me. My job when I'm teaching is to make everything all eyes on me, right? I don't want anyone who's feeling nervous or uncomfortable, someone that does have a pimple. I don't want kids to be like, oh, so-and-so has a pimple, right? I don't want that for any of the kids. So I will be like, oh my God, check out this big Jose pimple on my forehead. They're like, you can sell it, get away from me. Um, but it makes it more, um, it makes them feel safe. And that's the most important thing in my classroom is that I want the kids to feel comfortable and safe. Um, talking about things that aren't the normal conversations that we're used to having, okay? Um, these are some of the questions that I have had over the years um, from the kids, okay? I don't want anyone ever to feel scared talking about their bodies, right? This is, this is not what I want. And I am overly goofy. I am like insanely goofy in front of your kids, right? They roll their eyes at me all the time, okay? This whole beginning of the year, oh my gosh, right? They roll their eyes. You know the eye rolls. You know your children, right? You know who has those like in amazing eye rolls, right? Um, I don't want anyone to ever feel scared, right? My goal is to make sure that your children are going to you with all of their questions. You are your child's first health educator. That's, that's on you, right? That is your job, okay? I 
I'm your backup support, right? I am here to help you if you're feeling a little bit nervous to talk about this information, right? That's my job. You are your child's first health educator, okay? And I'm just here, I'm, I'm just here, okay? And I love it, right? This, this is my favorite, okay? I even, okay, not to brag or anything, but I will. Um, I even have a sash made that I am a puberty princess, right? So this is how much I adore um, talking about puberty with all of your children. I'm very fond of my sash. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. Um, so we're gonna talk about hormones. We're gonna talk about why all this puberty stuff happens. And so like, I have a lot of um, stuff, body parts. Um, so here's my brain. Um, I have Bob. Um, some of you may have heard about Bob. That's my anatomical person. There's Bob over there sitting on my table. Bob needs a haircut. Um, and so we're going to talk about like the pituitary gland and why the pituitary gland causes all of these changes to start to happen inside of their bodies. Okay. So I'll be like, ooh, check out your pituitary gland. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about hormones and, and changes and, and why that happens. Oh, oh, here's um, a little a little um, poll question. I don't know if this is the, the right one. Okay. So okay, perfect. So have any of you started to notice any mood swings? Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> almost look at that. 90% of you almost. Excellent. Okay, so we will spend a lot of time um, talking about mood swings, talking about why at moments they may feel sad all of a sudden or angry all of a sudden or why, you know, their grownups are driving them cuckoo bananas, right? And they need a few moments, you know, to get home from school and just have a moment by themselves. These are things that you as a parent, okay, have to take a moment when they're driving you crazy with their mood swings and take a breath, right? Because we're the grownups and we know that this is happening to them and it's hard for them to control it. It's hard for them to control it. It's changing inside of them. It, it's, it, it's a roller coaster for them. We know this, so we have to acknowledge it. Now, um, the problem is, and I will tell your kids this, is that it's their tone of voice, right? They don't need a tone, right? And so, so we'll talk about that. Like, oh yeah, when you're like, nah, that, right? And you have a tone, well, nobody likes that. And, and there's nothing wrong with having mood swing, but there's no reason for anyone to be mean, right? To one another, to the people that love you the most, right? And, and this is what I, I, I share with them. And I'm like, you gotta give your grownups a break sometimes, right? I'm like, you, you frustrate us sometimes. I'm like, we need a moment too, right? And so I'm very, very honest with them so that they um, can, can kind of navigate all of this together, okay? All right, let's see, what else do we have here? Sorry, I'm just, haven't done the slide. Oh, so. They love to share like everything with me. And um, I actually get more things that they say to me. Okay. But some kids are more like they want to write. And so you look at this question and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, is my kid thinking about pubic hair? Well, if they have it, okay. These are questions that they have, you know, oh gosh, is it normal to be a little itchy down there? Yeah, yeah, stuff is growing. 
right? So this, this is normal conversation. Is it weird at times, right? For me, no. Like I have kids that are like, Miss Kinsella, I have three pubic hairs. I'm like, oh, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. You know, go puberty, you know? And this is what we talk about. Um, some of them say it right in the middle of class. Some of them kind of like whispered in my ear. Okay, but these are conversations that we do have. Um, a lot about uh, other questions, talking about growth spurts, will it hurt? I, a lot of kids this year have been talking about it. Their knees are sore, their ankles are sore. Um, talking about, you know, are they growing? That's why I, I like to say to them, if they can measure themselves, right? And then, you know, they're feeling their knees are sore and then they go and they look, oh, I'm taller. Oh yeah, you're an inch taller. Of course your knees hurt. So it, it makes it easier for them um, to know, oh yeah, it is a growth spurt. And it's not that something is wrong with their bodies, okay? It's very, um, I try to teach them to advocate for themselves, right? I tell them, you know, if something is hurting, I'm like, you have to share that information. You have to know how to advocate um, for yourself. Okay. Um, they want to know, like, will puberty, you know, only be for like three weeks and then it's over? No, right? So we'll talk about um, how all of that happens. Um, is it okay to feel scared and lonely and nervous and all of those things? Most definitely. Okay, most definitely it is. And, and they all experience it, right? That these past two years have been hard on our kids. Insanely, insanely hard. This is a hard year at school, right? They want to be smothered in love, right? All they want is, is just love and attention. It's all they want. You can feel it. You know, they come up to me, they, you know, like, what's going on? You know, like they just want to, to be near people. They want to feel the closeness with people. But then they get nervous. Why do I feel so sad? You know, we just went through a pandemic. Of course, it's normal to feel sad. But then we talk about, you know, if it if it's if that sadness stays too long. You know, how do we ask for help? You know, making sure that there are adults in our lives that we can talk to, okay? So that, you know, I never want anyone to feel alone, okay? So, so, so we have like really deep, lovely, important conversations in class. And I, and I feel so very fortunate to be able to do this. Like I love coming to school each day and being with your kids, right? They're, they're mine too. And I wanna make sure that they, they know and, and, and feel loved um, and feel appreciated in, in everything that they do. So let's get to the anatomy. So um, like I have, you know, my brain um, body parts, Obviously, when I go over um, the anatomy, of course, I have body parts as well. So I have a beautiful um, crocheted uterus um, that I will be showing the kids that my mom made for me because my mommy loves me um, and made me this beautiful uterus. Um, so we will uh, talk about uh, what ovulation is, what menstruation is. We'll talk about breast development. Everybody's in the classroom, okay? Everybody's in there. Everyone is learning everything because there's nothing wrong with understanding about someone's body. Is it weird at times? Yes. Do kids feel nervous? Of course they feel nervous, okay? Okay, that is my job to make your children feel as comfortable as possible. Okay, 
please do not put your own insecurities or things that happen to you onto your children. That does not help them, okay? Doesn't help them, right? They're going to feel weird. They're going to feel nervous. They're growing up. Such is life. It's okay to feel nervous about this. It's okay to feel awkward. It is weird, right? It's their first time that they're having these sort of conversations and there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. Let them. They're growing up, right? They have to experience these feelings. We cannot shelter them. Oh no, you can't learn about that. <gasps> Don't learn about that. No, how does that help your child? It doesn't, okay? I am very open, okay? They're gonna learn everything and they're gonna learn it in a way that is safe in a controlled environment. Do people giggle and laugh? Of course, they giggle and laugh because they're nervous, right? fine. They laugh all the time. I don't have a problem with it, okay? Because it's nervous giggles and that's all right, okay? So this is the, the image that they will see, okay? Now, when they look at these images, they're like, what the heck is that, right? Some of you are looking at this image being like, what? I don't even know what that is. Like if I gave a little pre-quiz, you know, are you all going to get 100% on this? I'm thinking not. Okay. So there's things that, you know, they're going to be like, what is all this? I mean, the first thing is understanding that there's three holes. Okay. Down there. Most people only think there's two. Like there are grown people that are like, what are you talking about? Three holes down there. Yes. You got a pee hole right? The urethra, you got a pee hole, you got a vaginal hole, the vaginal opening, okay? That's the period where the period comes from, and you got a poop hole, right? And so we talk about all of these things, and they're like, mm, what? Ah. They're like, what? You got two holes. I got three holes, right? It, it's all good, right? We're, we're talking about our differences. There's nothing wrong with learning about that, Okay, um, so this so this says, you know, this is what they get. You need to do me a favor as well. Those of you that are telling your children that a baby grows in a person's stomach, you need to stop because you know that is not true. Babies don't grow in a stomach. Your stomach is where you digest your food. Does that even make sense? Doesn't make any sense, right? So I have to unteach stuff to your children because you thought you were being good by saying, oh no, the baby grows in the mommy's belly, right? And then when I talk about what a uterus is, they're like, what are you talking about? What? Okay, so that is you going forward. You are not saying anymore that babies grow in stomachs or bellies. Wrong information, right? All right. So um, let me see. Oops, wait, I got to go back to that because this is a good one, right? Is your vagina, that thing in the middle, like it looks like two hot dog buns are surrounded and it looks like a raisin, right? This is what your children ask me. That's the vulva, right? They, they don't know that word, the vulva. They think that the parts on the outside is the vagina. It's not. People say that all the time. It's like, oh, I saw your vagina. No, you can't see anybody's vagina. The vagina's on the inside. The vulva is on the outside. The vulva is where the hair grows on a person, okay? There's nothing wrong with these words. They're not bad words, okay? So we're gonna talk about that, 
people pay. Everybody's everybody's itchy, right? Everybody's itchy in puberty, right? And my boobs itchy. Like what what what's happening to these things? Okay. Um, you know, when will my breast develop? Okay. Um, everybody's breasts grow differently. Um, when the breasts um buds start happening, that usually is a sign that their periods are kind of on their way. Um, some people will, will talk about, um, this is a really important one, especially this year, because we'll have real graduations. And this is for everybody, because we all have nipples, right? You have to make sure that your kid, if they're, what they're wearing a, at graduation, that they're either wearing a bra or an undershirt under their shirt because their nipples shine straight through with those stage lights, okay? And so I will mention that to kids at school because I know some kids are a little hesitant if they would wear, you know, wear a bra. We will talk about that. Some kids are like, I don't want to wear a bra. Like I have, I have parents that are like, please, will you talk to my child? I, they need to wear a bra um, that I'll have like, you know, private conversations and, and talk about that with them. Um, we talk vaginal discharge, okay? The way that we talk vaginal discharge is I get, um, I get a glue stick. Okay, and then I had a little piece of paper. I don't know what I did with it, but like, I'll just take a glue stick and I'll just like take it and I'll be like, okay, you're gonna start to notice this vaginal discharge in your undies, right? That's the vagina's way of saying, hi, it's me, your vagina. Your period is coming soon. Hello, pay attention to me, okay? so. Is that weird to have conversations about? No, because that's what happens to people's bodies, right? That, that is a normal thing that happens to a person's body as they're starting to go um, through puberty, okay? Um, you know, when I get my period, how many times will I have cramps? You know, we, we talk about what causes cramps. So like when a person has their period, right? And I literally um, will, I, oops, I thought it was the next page. Like I literally put this, I like, there's a picture of me in a second, but I literally put this on, okay? And we talk about how the egg cell, I don't know where my egg cell went, um, that the egg cells travel, you know, through the ovaries, through the fallopian tubes, okay? We talk about how the blood starts to form um, inside the uterus, okay? And that when a person does start to get their period, their uterus is like, get out of here, blood. Get out of here, blood. And it starts to squeeze and it's saying, get out of here. Um, and that's when you get cramps, okay? And sometimes it hurts and it's not so fun. Um, but, you know, we talk about why cramps happen and, and what goes on in the person's body. You know, talking about periods really isn't, for those of them that are going to get it, like knowing that they're going to get their period once a month for three to seven days for the next 40 years not super exciting news, right? It's not like, oh, yay, hallelujah, right? Um, but it's something that, you know, we talk about and it happens to people and we want them um, to be prepared. We talk about, you know, wearing, you know, what do you do, you know, when you, when you get your period? Like, what does it feel like when you get your period? And I'm very, like, this is legit what I do with them. I'm like, okay, I'm like, you're sitting in class, right? And it's feeling like a little wet down there. I'm like, you get up, you go to the bathroom, you pull down your pants, you pull down your undies and you wipe. And literally I'm like, and you wipe. And I'm like, and sometimes you're just sweaty, right? Sometimes you're just a little bit sweaty down there, okay? But then sometimes, okay, you sitting there, it feels a little bit wet. Okay, you get up, you go to the bathroom, pull down your pants, pull down your undies, and then you go to wipe, and then you're like, whoa, 
I got my period, right? And so then, you know, they're like, ah, right? And then they're like, ah, and they're like, because I like hide it in my back pocket. So they're like, ah, ah, my period, right? Um, and so I'm like, oh, look, now you won't be scared anymore because now you'll just think of me in, in your period. Um, and they're like, oh, that's crazy, Miss Kinsella. Um, but th that's what we talk about. Um, is it normal, you know, to get hair on the vulva? Should be uh, vulva, okay? This, these are the things I don't want to talk to my mom about. I don't want that for any of you. I don't want that. I want them to come to you first. That's what I want but I'm here for them if they're not feeling comfortable, right? So you need to do your part and talk to your children about this stuff. You have to, you need to. And there are gonna be times when they ask you a question and you're gonna be like, oof, I don't know the answer. It's okay to say to your kid, I don't know the answer. Let me have a few minutes to sort of think about it and get back to you, right? Because you need to have these conversations with your children, okay? Talking, like when we were talking about vaping, right? I asked them, I'm like, oh, I'm like, if your grown up found out today that you vaped, what do you think the consequence would be? You know what they'd say? My parents would kill me. I'm like, that's, that's not a consequence. I'm like, they're not going to kill you. I'm like, seriously, what, what is going to happen? Most of them didn't have an answer because they didn't know. They don't know what the consequence is. You got to do your job, right? These are conversations you need to have. You need to say to your kid, hey, you know, we don't vape. You know, this isn't something that's good with us. If I find out you're vaping, this is what's going to happen. They need to know the consequence, right? They need to know that you're there for them, that you'll always support them, but they need to know. They need you to be there as a support for them, okay? Because I don't, I don't want them to not come to you, right? I want them to go to you. And I'm just here to help. I'm just here for help. Okay, um, legit, this is me, right? I'm putting on the uterus. This is what your children will see. So when they say, oh, I saw Miss Kinsella's uterus today, they're not lying, okay? They did, they saw it. I even got, I guess what I got last year, a vagina. Look at how beautiful my vagina is. Isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful vagina, the urethra. We don't really talk about the clitoris so much, um, but it's there, anatomical. And then the beautiful anus, right? So we'll talk about this. Oh, my vagina. Okay. Um, they love to draw little pictures for me. I've even had kids um, last year uh, during uh, COVID, some were getting into sewing. So they made me a little period because they felt like they felt my period was too like too uh, scary. Like, ah, they felt theirs was like much cuter. Um, so that's, that's kind a little period for me. Okay. Um, when will my period stop? You know, not so much fun. Um, we talk about, you know, how to wear a pad. They don't even know how to wear a pad, right? So we talk about, I had, I had, a, I had a student a few years ago would say to me, had her period already in fifth grade and said to me, my pads hurt me, Miss Kinsella. I'm like, they hurt you? I don't understand. I'm like, tell me about this. How does it hurt you? They're like, well, when I put it on, it always like, it pulls out my, my little hairs. They thought they wore a pad, like a Band-Aid, right? So they literally would stick the pad to them, to themselves, not to the undies, right? 
And so you think to yourself, oh yeah, just have your period, go put a pad on. They don't even understand or know how to put a pad on, okay? We do talk about the period undies, you know, that some, some kids may like the period undies. Um, we talk about tampons just, you know, uh, just because I even have a crochet tampon. Um, so, of course, we have to talk about tampons because my, my crochet tampon is so cute. Um, but we talk about it. They're always like, what? That goes where? You know, um, they're always afraid they're going to, you know, put it in the wrong hole. They're like, I'm going to put it in the wrong hole. I'm like, you won't. I'm like, your, your, your pee hole, your urethra is too small and, and you don't shove it up your anus. So you only got one other hole that it can go in and that's the vaginal opening, okay? So that's my tampon. Uh, let's see, uh, why do I have blood coming out of my vagina? We'll talk about pads and panty liners. Ugh, this has happened twice already this year twice this year, once last week, okay? I, I, we go over a plan, right? Of, you know, we talk about, you know, if you feel it's wet, you know, what do you do? Um, you know, like I just showed you. Um, it's health education is about skills, right? And they need to have the skills in order to take care of their body, whether it's the skills of being in the shower and washing, so they stay clean, whether it's washing their hair, whether it's wearing deodorant, clean clothes, whatever it may be, but it's also recognizing, you know, what happens, you know, when a person is starting to get their period and in and, and those feelings, you know, and I try to give them, you know, if it feels wet, what do you do? Okay, because when they don't know, they just sit there not knowing, right? And we, and we don't want we don't want that for any we don't want that for anyone. So, um, will anyone know I'm getting my period? Um, I love, um, you know, a lot of the kids have seen that movie Turning Red uh this year so they they talked about like I saw it turning red did you see it the skin cell about periods um which is which is great that it's just another way for kids to feel comfortable and acknowledging things that are happening in their bodies um does it hurt you know like I said we talked about cramps um what you know what to use that's up to you know them what they feel comfortable using um so worrying about their breast size when can they start to shave i really try um to slow them down um with shaving because some kids want to start shaving they're like can you just call my home and tell them i can shave my legs you know, some kids do feel self-conscious about these things. Um, I try to hold them off as long as possible because I'm like, oh, once you start, it's like you just have to keep going. Um, but they do ask about like shaving their legs and um, that stuff. Facial hair, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, maybe not so much, but now I still got a little chin hair here and there. Annoying, um, but we talk about it. So I even if, oh, where my penis go? So obviously if I had a crocheted uterus, um, I would say to my mom, please, mom, will you make me a crocheted penis? And my mom would say, no, I'm not making you a penis. And I'm like, so I would say it to enough people that during COVID, one of my friends learned to crochet because she was so sick and tired of me complaining that I didn't have a, a crochet penis. So she made me a crochet penis. So I'm so happy with my penis. Um, so when, uh, so my penis, um, has a beautiful foreskin. Um, so we'll talk about that, but then we also talk about how some kids look at that penis. You, you, you just are so jealous of my beautiful crochet penis. Um, so then there's my crochet penis, right? And so we talk about, um, we talk about the penis and testicles and, and the scrotum and um, 
And so you also, so those of you that have a kid that has a penis, okay, this is like kind of a shocker for some of them because, because some of your kids are not circumcised, right? So they will look at this picture and be like, oh yeah, I know what that foreskin is, right? They know what it is. But some of your kids are circumcised and they had no idea about it. And they're like, what do you mean? I had a surgery to my penis. No one told me about my surgery to my penis, right? So I'm just telling you that they're going to talk about it. So they may come to you and say, hey, what did you do? <laughs> this my penis so cute. Uh, that they're going to talk to you about it, okay? So this is the diagram that they get that, you know, we'll talk about. Again, do I think all of you would get 100% if you had this anatomy? Does everyone know about their epididymis and their seminal vesicles? I don't think all of you do. Okay, but your children will, okay? Um... Why do we have a stick in two balls, right? Okay, so we talk about a penis just like we talk about the vulva and fallopian tubes and everything else, okay? What is it for, you know? I, you know, we talk about that. They, you know, those that have a penis are going to have two holes. They have the hole at the tip of their penis where their pee comes out and also semen, which they'll learn about. And then they have, their anus for their poop. So they only have two holes, okay? Other people have three. So we talk about it. Um, we talk about the testicles, okay? Um, we talk about that most people, if they have testicles, have two, okay? I've had um, several students that were born with three. I've had several students that only had one. I had a student just this year tell me in class that he was out last week because his testicle was wasn't it wasn't descended right and had to have surgery. Told the whole class. Okay, so so we will have these conversations um, about it. We talk about erections. Okay, why um, their penis will get hard. Okay, and they you know they're like. Yeah, they're like, oh, that, that has a name, an erection. They're like, I thought it was just a boner. I'm like, well, I'm like, there's no bone inside of your penis. I'm like, who do you think you are, Harry Potter, that the bone just appears and disappears? I'm like, there's no bone in there. That doesn't even make sense. Okay. So then they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. Why do we call it a boner, right? And so then we talk about, you know, that the blood rushes, you know, to the penis and then the penis gets hard. Um, we'll talk about it. They, um, oh, the wet dreams, okay? So what you, students will start to notice, what your kids will start to notice is that as they start to go through puberty, they're going to be getting erections more often. Sometimes every like 90 minutes, they may start getting erections because of all the hormones um, and that it's very normal, you know, that their penis will just, it's soft and it's just hanging there and then it goes zoop. And then the penis gets hard and then it's like, zoop, and then it gets soft again. Um, and they're always, you know, they're like, oh, that's why, you know, like if I play a sport and I wear a cup sometimes, I'm like, I have to move it around. I'm like, that's right, because you get an erection and it feels uncomfortable and you have to make it so your body feels, you know, okay. Um totally normal. They do, um, you know, why does it go up and down? Sometimes, sometimes it's just hormones, right? It's the hormones, the, chem the, the chemicals, the hormones are causing the body's, uh, the penis to have an erection. 100% normal, okay? We talk about it. Um, why, are, why are my testicles so wrinkly? You know, how come, you know, how come when I go into the ocean, you know, I, I lose my testicles, 
right? And they're not saying testicles. They're always like, oh, oh my God, I jump in the pool and then and then my balls are gone. Where did my balls go? I'm like your balls are still there. And like, we're gonna say testicles because I wanna make sure we're using the scientific terms. I'm like, but I know you call them your nuts or your, you know, your sack, your ball bag. And like, I say all these words and they're like hysterical. Oh my God, she said, you know, ball bag. I'm like, ha ha ha. You know, I, I even have a beautiful testicle. It does make me laugh that it's blue. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so that is just for my own adult humor that when I'm teaching, I'm like, ha ha, do you see my blue testicles? <laughs> okay, anyway, so that's just, I am easily amused by myself. So anyway, so we have testicle, the epididymis, the seminal vesicle. You know, we talk about how the sperm um, start to develop. And then what happens is that when they start to get wet dreams is that the brain sends a message to the testicles and it says, hey, testicles, make me some sperm. And the testicles are like, okay, I'll make you some sperm, right? And then there's too much sperm in the testicles. Okay, so then it moves to the epididymis and then it moves to the seminal vesicle and it moves up to the seminal vesicle. It meets, uh, it meets the sperm meat with this fluid and that makes semen. And then while they're sleeping, and this is exactly like how I'm talking to them. So like, this, this is what I'm doing. I'm like, and then I'm like, you'll be sleeping. And then as you're sleeping, you get an erection. And then all that sperm that's all built up inside comes out. And then your penis gets off. And then you wake up in the morning and then whatever you wore to bed, your pajama bottoms, your tidy whities your boxer briefs, I don't know what they wear to bed, whatever. Um, it might feel a little bit sticky. And that's just your body had too much sperm inside. And so that it had to, it had to get out because there was just too much inside and had to get out. Now, back to, um, I think it was Trisha that had asked before, had uh, like, you know, what about like pleasure and that. So I only talk about um, when they have wet dreams, right? That it, it, that they, I was gonna say it comes out at night. <laughs> um, again, I make myself laugh. Um, that they, um, that they'll learn more about that when they get older, like with sex ed. Okay, but then there are some kids that'll say to me, they'll be like, Miss Kinsella. I'm like, what? And I always know the kids because they're kind of looking around at each other, like, that, that stuff comes out during the day too, right? And, and, and some of them will come up to me, kids will come up to, to me and say, you know, like sometimes like when I'm in the shower, that white stuff comes out. I'm like, that's right. You know, that's okay. Cause sometimes you may be washing your body, you're washing your penis and you're like, ooh, hello penis, that feels nice. And then next thing you know, you get an erection and then the semen comes out, normal, that happens. There's nothing wrong. That's a normal thing that can happen, okay? Um, oh, they're always worried of what happens if they have to pee and have an erection. I'm like, well, just give it a minute so your penis is soft, so it's easier to aim with. I'm like, you don't wanna be like peeing in your face, okay? Um, you know, they're worried about pimples everywhere. How big will the penis grow? Ah, oh, always. They always ask this. And some, some are like, mine's an anaconda. I'm like, it's an inchworm. I'm like, come on, my friend. I'm like, you are a dreamer. Um, but they, they say these things. Right. And some of them say things to me because they want, they want to get a rise. They want to be the funny kid in class. I'm going to make sure that I am the one that's staying in control, okay, of the, um, of the class. 
oh, will the erection go away? I hate those Viagra commercials because it says, if you have an erection lasting more than four hours, they'll always ask about that. They're like, I can have an erection for four hours. What do I do with it? I'm like, no, that's just if someone is taking medicine because their penis doesn't work so good anymore. Um, so, so they listen, you know, they hear these words. So they're hearing this information because they, they ask about it. Um, oh, voice changing, you know, we talk about, you know, what that means. What does it feel like? What does the semen look like? And, and so I explain it, right? So if I, if I'm going over vaginal discharge, I'm also talking about the semen in the same sort of way because it's their body. I want them to understand what's happening. I'm sorry, I'm so chatty. I'm five minutes over. So let me, um, I apologize. Um, book recommendations. Here they are. I know some kids are wicked readers, right? And they want a book in their hand um, to read. Remember, you, you are the best source of information for your child. No one is better than you, except me. Um, that, um, that if your kid is that kid that loves a book and wants to have it in their hand, you know, if, it, if it's more comfortable for you, to be like, I know we're starting puberty and, you know, I'm a little bit nervous, but here's a book and, and, and you give it to your child that way because it helps you open that lines of communication. Perfect. Right. So, you know, your kid, um, these are great. Are, are, no, I take that back. These books are good. Okay. Are they great? No, there's, there's things in there that I would like cross out and rearrange the writing. Do, it, it, it's not nothing perfect, okay? It's not perfect because I haven't written it yet, um, but it's, it's they're, they're a good start, okay? Um, there are websites. Uh, Brain Pop and Kids Health are, I would feel comfortable with you you know, uh, them looking at, um, we use brain pop and kids health all the time at school. Do not, do not give them amaze.org slash junior without you looking at it. Great website. Okay. Some of the stuff is a little, you know, out of some parents' comfort zones. Okay, um, it, they have good information for you. Um, definitely not a site that I would say um, just free reign for your children. Okay, You're, some kids have too much free reign, which makes me a little bit nervous. Like their uh, obsessions to TikTok and Instagram and those sort of things make me a little nervous at times. Um, none of your children should be watching that show Big Mouth. Even though it's about puberty, it is not meant, okay, for 10-year-olds. Okay, so just because it's a cartoon and it's puberty, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not meant, okay? And I know some kids watch it and I talk to them about it. I'm like, that's not, that's not the best show for you to be watching right now, okay? Um, and you got this, right? You got this. I, I am your backup support, okay? Um, if you are feeling, oh gosh, I just need a little one-on-one -on -one with, with me for like 15 minutes to go over approach because you're nervous, send me an email, okay? Send me an email and then I'll give you my cell and then we'll, we'll talk it out, okay? My, I've been in the district so long though that I have no A, even though my name is Michelle Kinsella. Um, when I first started, when email was like this new thing and it was so exciting to get an email, um, I was only given eight letters. Okay, so if you email me, it make sure there's no A at the end because I won't, I won't get it. Okay. Um, Excellent. Thank you. <laughs>